There are three more sets of important identities that we have not seen yet, and we're going to look at deriving those today as we answer the same question, really, what are some more identities? Specifically, what are some more important identities? And again, these are not going to be identities that I expect you to memorize in this course, but they are important enough that you should know of them and when to use them when they come up. The first set of identities are called the double angle identities. And the idea of the double angle identity is we want to figure out how we can simplify the sine of 2 alpha. Because sometimes we can't simplify that what's in the sign, but we can simplify half of it. So what we're going to do to get there is we're going to use the fact that the sine of 2 alpha is the same as sine of alpha plus alpha. And we have a formula for that sum of sines. We know that's equal to the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle plus the cosine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. It just so happens that those are all the same this time. And now you notice we have a like term. So what we can do now is we can say that the sine of 2 alpha is equal to 2 times the sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha. And that becomes our first double angle identity. The second one's really similar, as you would expect. It's the cosine of 2 alphas. And a cosine of 2 alpha is the same as cosine of alpha plus alpha. And then we can use our sum formula. And we know the cosine of a sum is equal to the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. Well, we can combine together cosine cosine is cosine squared and sine sine is sine squared. And so we end up with the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to the cosine squared of alpha minus the sine squared of alpha. And we get our double cosine angle formula. Now, since we see sine squared and cosine squared in that formula, that might beg the question, what about the fact that sine squared of alpha plus cosine squared of alpha is equal to 1? Well, if I solve this for sine squared of alpha, I end up getting that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared of alpha. So if I replace the sine squared, let's call this a, if I replace the sine squared with this identity, we get the cosine of 2 alpha is the cosine squared of alpha minus 1 minus cosine squared of alpha. And if I distribute that 1 through, we get cosine squared of alpha minus 1 plus cosine squared of alpha, which means if I combine the like terms, we end up with 2 cosine squared of alpha minus 1 as another way to write the same thing, the cosine of 2 alpha. So we kind of end up with a corollary or related theorem that the cosine of 2 alpha is cosine squared minus sine squared, but it's also 2 cosine squared minus 1. Of course, why stop there? I could have solved sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1. Last time we solved for sine squared, I can also solve it for cosine squared, making it 1 minus sine squared. And then in the original formula up above, I would now have the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to, instead of cosine, 1 minus sine squared alpha minus another sine squared. And when I combine like terms this time, we get kind of a third form of the cosine of 2 alpha 
is 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. And so there's actually three different versions that you might see of the cosine of 2 alpha. And you should be able to use any of those three depending on the situation and what's best for what we're doing. So those are our double angle formulas. The next set of formulas are probably the most important when you get to calculus. And that is the power reduction formulas. We know already, we just proved, that the cosine of 2 alpha is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of alpha. What we're going to do is we're going to solve this formula for sine squared so we have a way to get rid of the square and just have cosines. Well, we'll do that by first subtracting 1 from both sides. Then we divide everything by negative 2 on both sides. When we do that, and I'm going to switch the order, we say that sine squared of alpha is equal to, when we divide by the negative, it's going to change all the signs. So I'm going to put the 1 first. 1 minus the cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. And in this class, we're going to use the formula like this. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. However, when you get to calculus, you'll have another way that you'll write sine squared of alpha. And that is you'll distribute the divide by 2 through. So you have 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2 alpha. So in calculus, you'll use this version on the right, because that version on the right is very easy to find what's called the antiderivative or to integrate. The one on the left takes a little more work. So when you get to calculus and your instructor asks you what's that sine squared formula, this is what she or he wants. So don't forget that one. That one's going to be really important. And in Calc 2, you will probably memorize that one. This was for the sine squared, but cosine of 2 alpha also has a cosine squared version. We just said cosine of 2 alpha was 2 cosine squared of alpha minus 1. And we can do the same thing and solve for cosine squared to give us a very similar formula. We can start by adding 1 to both sides so that the cosine of 2 alpha plus 1, I'm going to put the 1 plus on the left, equals 2 cosine squared of alpha. And then divide both sides by 2, like we did up above. And that's going to give us, switching the order again, cosine squared of alpha is equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. And again, this is the version that we're going to use in this class. But when you take calculus, you're going to find distributing the divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half works better to distribute that through. Cosine squared of alpha is 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2 alpha. And again, this right version is going to be really nice in your calculus class. But for now, we'll use the 1 on the left. Just make sure when your calc teacher refers to it, you're familiar with the 1 on the right. All right, there's one other set of identities that I want you to be familiar with, and that is called the half angle identities. And the half angle identities say, let's start with these squared formulas, these power reduction formulas that we just derived. Let's start with cosine squared of alpha which we know is equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. And we're going to make a substitution and let alpha equal beta over 2. 
When we do that, we'll get the cosine squared of beta over 2 is equal to 1 plus the cosine of two alphas, which gives us 2 beta over 2. So the 2's reduce out, giving us just the beta over 2. And then if I take the square root of both sides, what we end up with is the cosine of half an angle, which makes it the half angle formula. The cosine of beta over 2 is equal to plus or minus, because we took the square root of both sides, the square root of 1 plus the cosine of beta over 2. And that formula is going to be our half angle identity for the cosine, cosine of a half angle. We can do something very similar, though, with the sine squared formula. We know sine squared of alpha is equal to 1 minus the cosine of 2 alpha divided by 2. And again, we're going to do much the same thing. We're going to say let alpha equal beta over 2, and almost the same thing is going to arise out of this. We end up with sine squared of beta over 2 equals 1 minus the cosine of beta over 2 times 2 is just beta divided by 2. And now we can take the square root of both sides, leaving us with the sine of the half angle beta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of beta over 2. And that is our final half angle identity. So we talked about three sets of identities in this video today. First was the double angle identities. If we've got a double angle in sine or cosine, there's three versions of the cosine, actually. We talked about power reduction, how to take sine squared or cosine squared and write them without the squared. And we talked about half angles, which t tell us how to take an angle divided by 2 and actually calculate what its value is. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how we can use these new identities to actually solve problems, equations, and proofs. We'll see you in the next video.